Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial where I'm gonna show you how I make this cute kawaii octopi. I wanted to take the time to show you the difference between my two baby octopuses. So I know a lot of people are following my first uh, video tutorial uh, where I show you how to make these uh, cute octopi as well. So there is a difference between both of them. One is bigger, the other one is smaller and the tentacles are also different. You can find the written pattern in the description to make your own kawaii octopus family and that's including the babies, the mom with the pouch and the father without the pouch in the belly. Even though I am showing you the techniques I am using for this tutorial, please keep in mind that this is not a crochet class. So you will need to know the basic of crochet like holding a hook and yarn, counting your stitches and make single crochet stitches. I'm also offering online crochet courses on my Etsy, so if you're a beginner and would like to learn quickly or if you like to learn to read a pattern for example, so the parts of an amigurumi and more, make sure to check the description to find the links to my courses. If ever in the video I'm going too quick or too slow for you, you can always change the speed of the video in the settings. Okay, so for this tutorial I'm gonna use the worsted weight yarn just because it's easier for me to show you um, the stitches. Uh, when I work with this yarn compared to the big bulky yarn like this one so it's really hard to see the stitches uh, on video sometimes so I just prefer to show it uh, with worsted rate yarn but you can find the list of everything I used in the description uh, down below you will also need a yarn needle a pair of scissors 3.5 millimeter crochet hook 7 millimeter safety eyes some polyester stuffing I will use uh, many stitch markers just to show you a little tip uh, for one part of the baby uh, octopus but you can just use one or you can use bobby pins or strands of yarns you'll see what we're gonna do with them and that's about it so let's get started okay so you're gonna need your crochet hook and your yarn and I'm gonna show you the technique I'm using when I'm working with the super bulky yarn just because it's a little different from worsted weight yarn for example, with worsted weight yarn, I'm able to make a magic ring and work my single crochet stitches into that ring, but not with the bulky yarn. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing with the bulky yarn. And if you're working with worsted weight yarn, just like me, you can just simply do a magic ring if you know how to do it and work eight single crochet stitches into that ring. Otherwise, we're going to chain two. So I'm going to make a slip knot, so I'm holding my yarn tail, I'm going to wrap it around two fingers to make an X. I'm going to turn my hand and I'm going to insert my crochet hook underneath the first strand and then I'm going to grab the second strand. I'm going to lift my crochet hook, remove my fingers and pull on the yarn tails. So this is a slip knot and what you want to make sure is that when you pull on the yarn tail, your loop should tighten up, just like so. And now I'm going to work my two chains, so I'm going to yarn over, so the yarn goes over the hook, pull through the loop on the hook, so this is one chain, and I'm going to do one more. And now I have my two chains. And now I'm going to work my eight single crochet stitches into the second chain from the hook, so this is the first chain and this is the second. So I'm going to insert my hook in the second chain from the hook, and for this pattern I decided to work with the yarn under technique. So uh, it just gives you tighter stitches and a slightly different look. So I just like this look for this pattern. So you're going to start by yarning under. So the yarn is under the hook. You're going to grab it, pull through. But you know you could also use just a regular yarn over uh, single crochet stitches if you don't want to work the yarn under. It's still going to work. So I insert in my hook in the second chain from the hook. I yarn under, pull through, and then I'm going to yarn over, so the yarn is over my hook, and then I'm going to pull through both loops. So this is one single crochet stitch, and I want to make a total of eight. So I'm going back into the same chain, going to yarn under, pull through the chain, yarn over, pull through both loops. Now I'm going to make two more to have a total of four, so that's three and four. And I just want to pull on my yarn tail just to tighten up that hole again. And if you're working with super bulky yarn, that's really important. Otherwise, the hole will be big and you won't be able to close it. Okay, 
Now I'm gonna go back so it's really close to the little knot that I have here. So this is where I want to insert my hook. And like I said, I want a total of eight stitches. So now I'm at five. And if you want to count them, you can just count the little V shape. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. I'm going to hold my knot again and pull on the yarn tail to close the opening. So it looks like this. And now I'm going to insert my crochet hook into the first single crochet stitch that we made to start our round two. And if you're not sure where it is, you can just uh, count from the end. So I'm going to count from the last stitch and I want to have eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I know I'm going to insert my hook here. So I'm going to insert it like this. I'm going to make a single crochet stitch, always yarning under first, pulling through, and then yarning over, pulling through. And now I'm going to place my stitch marker here. So we place a stitch marker in the first stitch of the round just to mark that this is the start of a round. And for round two, we're making increases. So uh, to make an increase, it's basically to make two single crochet stitches into the same stitch. So I've just made one. I'm going to go back into the same stitch and make another single crochet. So this is my first increase. So I have one stitch here where my stitch marker is and then two stitches. Then I'm going into the next stitch and I'm going to work two single crochet stitches. So now I have four, one, two, three, four. And I want to do that around. So since we started with eight stitches and we're making increases in each stitch, you should have a total of 16 stitches at the end of round two. So we're going to meet at the end of the round. Okay, so I'm at the end of round two and my piece looks like this. So I reached the stitch marker here and I have 16 stitches around and I'm just going to pull on my yarn tail again just to close that opening. So if you worked a magic uh, ring, you should not have a hole in the middle. It's just because we chained two. Okay. And now we're going to do our rounds three to five. So it's always going to be the same thing that you're going to need to do. So I'm going to remove the stitch marker. I'm going to make a first single crochet stitch. I'm going to put my marker back. And for rounds three to five, what you're going to do is that you're simply going to make one single crochet stitch in each stitch. So you're going to keep 16 stitches around and you, and you want to do that for rounds three, four and five. So I'm going to do round three with you. So now I've just made my first single crochet. I'm going into the next stitch. I'm going to make one single crochet. Going into the next stitch, one single crochet. And I just want to do that around. And remember that you can always change the speed of the video if I'm going too slow or too fast for you in the settings under playback speed. Okay, I have one more to do. And you see that the piece is uh, starting to curve and it curves towards me. So I just want to flip it to make sure that I'm seeing the right side of my stitches. So this is the right side of my stitches and this would be the wrong side. But I know that some people prefer to just show the wrong side. If it's your case, then it's fine. But I just want, want you to know that this is the right side and this is the wrong side and you should have your yarn tail inside the piece like this and now I'm gonna let you work and you're gonna make rounds four and five just like we did for round three so you can just uh, go back in the video if you want to see round three again so you're making one single crochet stitch in each stitch around to keep the total of stitches of 16 and we're gonna meet at the end of round five and I am now at the end of round five and I have one more single crochet stitch to do. 
So my piece looks like this. I still have my yarn tail inside. So this is basically the head of the octopus. Okay, so it looks like this. So we have round one, two, three, four, five. And I still have 16 stitches around. So I'm just gonna remove my crochet hook and pull in, pulling on the loop. And we're gonna uh, place the eyes. So if you're using worsted weight yarn, you're gonna place the eyes between uh, the last two rounds. So between round four and five. So this would be right here. But if you're using uh, the biggest size, so the super bulky yarn or the jumbo yarn, I'm not placing the eyes between the last two rows or two rounds because it was too low. So I'm just placing them uh, between rounds three and four. So this is round one, two, three, and four. So just keep that in mind. If you're doing the jumbo yarn, uh, you're gonna place the eyes a little higher, but of course, just place them <laughs> wherever you think it's cute. So I'm gonna show you with worsted weight yarn. So I'm gonna place my first eye on the other side of the stitch marker. So this is the back of the head and between the last two rounds like this. And then I'm gonna count three spaces between the stitch to insert my second. So this is one space between the stitches. So I'm gonna count one, two, and three, and I'm gonna insert my second eye into the third space, just like this. And then I'm gonna place the washers at the back of the eyes. So it's basically inside the head and I'm just placing them like this and I want it to clip like this. Then I'm gonna place the second one. And now I'm just gonna show you a little tip, but if you have more experience in uh, crochet, you can maybe skip that little tip. But if you're uh, new to crochet or if you're working with velvet yarn or even blanket or jumbo yarn, sometimes it's harder to see the stitches. So for this tip, I'm just gonna help you find your stitches for the next step. So I'm gonna take the first stitch that I have here, I'm gonna remove it. And instead of inserting my uh, stitch marker under both loops, I'm just gonna grab the front loop of the stitch. So the same stitch. And this would be the front loop only. So you see, I've only put my stitch marker into the front loop. I'm gonna secure it. And this would be the back loop of a stitch. So if I'm showing to you with this stitch, this is the front and this is the back loop. And I'm gonna place a stitch marker every two front loop. So I have placed one here. I'm gonna skip this one. I'm gonna go into the next, only in the front loop. And like I said, you can skip that part and go right to round six uh, if you, uh, if you don't have a problem seeing your stitches. So I'm gonna do that around. And you should have a total of uh, eight stitch markers because you had 16 stitches and you're always skipping one. Okay, so it looks like this. It's <laughs> really weird, but you'll see soon why I'm doing this, okay? So I'm gonna grab my, uh, my crochet hook and I'm gonna make round six. So to make round six, we're only gonna use the back loops this time and we're gonna make decreases. So if you know the invisible uh, decreases, this is not what I'm gonna do. I'm, so I'm just gonna do the regular decreases you, so you can just follow along to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna insert my crochet hook into the next back loop. I'm gonna yarn under pull through. So I have two loops and then I'm going to go into the next back loop. So where there's no stitch marker, yarn under, pull through like this and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. So this is one decrease and we want to do that around. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going into the next back loop. Yarn under, pull through, into the next back loop, yarning under, pulling through, have three loops, yarn over, pull through, 
again into the next back loop yarn under pull through into the next back loop yarn under pull through yarn over pull through all three loops so I'm gonna do that around until I have eight stitches around or where you should um, I should have put a different marker here just for you to to see but you can use a different marker uh, for the first front loop but I see that it's going to be here because you see this is my normal stitches and this is the front loops left okay but you can just count your stitches also so I know that I have made three and I have five more to make I am now at the end of round six and my head looks like this Okay, so this is all my decreases and to finish that part I'm gonna make a slip stitch into the next stitch I'm gonna insert my hook into both loops of the next stitch I'm gonna yarn over and pull through the loops and through the loop on the hook so this is a slip stitch I'm gonna leave a short yarn tail so not too long and I'm gonna cut my yarn like this and then you're gonna pull through okay and now we're going to stuff the head of the octopus. So if you're using a small yarn like I am using now, it may be a little hard for you to stuff, but you should be fine. Otherwise, you can just use a, a pencil or your crochet hook, for example. So I'm going to speed up that little part until my head is stuffed. Okay, the head is stuffed. And now I'm going to close the opening. I'm just moving my stitch markers so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use my yarn needle for this, but you could also use uh, your crochet hook. I'm going to thread my needle. And to close the opening, I'm going to use the front loops only uh, of the eight stitches that I have here. So I'm going from the outside going in like this, only into the front loop, and then I'm pulling through. And I want to do that around, so I'm going into the next front loop. Okay, so I know that this is the last one because I have my knot from the slip stitch here. And then I'm just going to pull on the yarn tail to close the opening. So my opening looks like this. I could leave it like this, so what I, but what I like to do is just to grab a few little lines here that you see and go underneath with my needle like this and I'm pulling through. Okay, and now I'm going to hide the yarn tail, so I'm just going to go back into the middle and then up into the head, pulling. And then I'm gonna cut my yarn. Okay, so we have our head and everything that is left to do is the tentacles like this. So, and this is why we have our stitch markers. So we're gonna use our crochet hook again and our yarn. And we're gonna join the yarn um, in the first front loop at the back of the head. So this is the front of the head, if I turn it, so once again, if I uh, used a different color stitch marker for the first front loop, you would see that this is the one. So if you look at the back, it should be the highest one. So I have a few front loops all here. And then I want to go into the highest one here. So I'm going to remove that stitch marker. I'm going to insert my crochet hook into that stitch and notice that I'm uh, holding the head uh, up so it's not upside down so it's really uh, up like this okay and then I'm going to place my yarn so I'm folding my yarn like this I'm just going to place it on my crochet hook and pull through the front loop and now I'm going to chain one so I'm just going to yarn over pull through and if your chain one is really loose, you can pull on your yarn tail. And now we're going to work uh, what I call mini bubble stitch. 
So a bubble stitch already exists, but I just wanted to make smaller bubble stitches. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to insert my hook into the same stitch where I joined my yarn like this. I'm going to yarn over. So I'm just yarning over for these stitches. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through the front loop. So I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops on my hook. And now I still have two loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and insert my crochet hook back into the same front loop. Yarn over, pull through the front loop. I have four loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops. I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. So this is one mini bubble stitch. Okay, so basically you've worked two half completed uh, double crochet stitches into the same front loop. Okay, once again, if your chain is really loose, you can pull on your yarn tail. And then I'm gonna go into the next front loop and this is not where my stitch marker is. So the stitch markers are here just to help you uh, make sure that you're not skipping any front loops. So sometimes when we're a beginner, it's hard to see the front loops and we're sometimes skipping some. So I know that the next one will be one without a stitch marker because then I have a stitch marker. Okay. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next front loop. I'm going to make a slip stitch. I'm going to yarn over, pull through the front loop and through the loop on my hook. And then I'm going to make another slip stitch where my stitch marker is. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker. I'm going to slip stitch in it. And then we're going to work another mini bubble stitch. So if you see, this is one tentacle. So we want a total of eight around. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to insert my hook into the same stitch. Yarn over, pull through the loop. I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through first two loops. Yarn over, go back into the same stitch. Yarn over, pull through the stitch. You have four loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. You have three loops. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. So this is another mini bubble stitch. And then I'm going to go into the next front loop, make a slip stitch. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch where my stitch marker is to make another slip stitch here. I'm going to do one more with you and then I'm going to let you work around. And if you're not sure, you can always uh, go back into the video to see how I make my bubble stitches. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through. I have three loops, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go back into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch, you have four loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops, you have three loops. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then I'm going to go into the next front loop where there's no stitch marker. I'm going to make a slip stitch. Okay, so I'm going to remove my stitch marker, work a slip stitch in that front loop and then a mini bubble stitch into the same stitch. So I'm going to meet you at the end of this round. So I'm going to do the last mini bubble stitch with you. Okay, so I'm at the end of the round and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mini bubble stitches made and I have one stitch marker left. So I'm going to remove it, make a slip stitch in that stitch. And then I'm going to work my last mini bubble stitch here. And to finish the run, uh, you should have one front loop left. So I'm going to insert my hook into that front loop, yarn over and pull through everything to make a slip stitch. I'm going to remove my crochet hook. I'm going to cut my yarn. You don't need to leave it so long. So just a short yarn tail. 
pull through. And now I'm gonna tie two knots with these yarn tails. So if you're using jumbo yarn, you're gonna hide the yarn tail with your crochet hook. So I'm gonna insert my crochet hook between two stitches of the head, and then I'm gonna uh, bring the crochet hook really close to that yarn tail. I'm gonna yarn over with it and then pull it through like this. And then I would just cut it. And if you have your yarn needle and you're working with a smaller uh, yarn, you can just thread your needle and then insert your needle really close to where the yarn tail is and then bring it back somewhere else in the head. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut my two yarn tails. Ta-da! You're done! I really hope you enjoy making that little baby. I hope you learned a lot and try to make these baby octopuses in many many sizes so we can see the difference and if you're making some please tag me on Instagram under all from Jade so I can see your uh, makes and I can share them in my stories and once again please subscribe comment under the video if you liked it and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye everyone!